Well, I've got to do this video before this thing melts. It is 95 degrees here in Lansing, and there's ro always room for dessert. <laughs> this is Kona ice, and uh, so very refreshing on a hot day. What's the difference between an old earth creationist and a young earth creationist? Why does it matter? We're going to get to that in this video. Welcome to There's Always Room for a Dessert, where I tell you all the yummy stuff I had to leave out for my Sunday's message. And I'm going to jump around fairly quickly, and then I'll give you resources for further study at the end. Um, these are resources from which I got a lot of the data, stats, scientific information that I presented in the message Sunday and in this video as well. So, Genesis 1 through uh, 1, 11 to 13 sets up the first thing that I left out of the message, and it was this. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees, and all the land that bear fruit and seed in it, according to the various kinds, and it was so. God saw that it was good. There was evening, there was morning the third day. So, here with plants, um, raspberry plus blueberry plant, when we mixed them together in a lab, we got boysenberry plant. Which is, um, this is wild berry honey right here. So, I think it might be like a boysenberry. It might be like that. So, when you mix berries in a lab, that doesn't happen in nature. I mean, maybe it could have. Family origin. Okay, from the DNA level. But, when you mix berries, you get ber berries, more berries. You don't get an orange. Because that's something outside the family. That's not something that can can happen in nature. Mm. That was kind of the point. At the family level, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, at the family level, that's the, according to their kind, that's mentioned nine times in Genesis chapter one. God created everything according to their kind. The DNA information was all there according to their kind. And so there's many family trees, the different families or kinds of animals, plants, etc birds, fish, and and humans, but there are not, there's not the ability to mutate from one kind to another, or family from one kind to another. So that's, that's the um, obvious, you know, vote against evolution. All right. Verse 15 of Genesis 1. And let there be lights in the vault of the sky to give light to, on the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day, and the lesser light to govern the night, and he also made the stars. There's a few things about our planet that I wanted to point out here. Um, 365 revolutions uh, our planet makes during its journey around the sun. Right, we call those days, right? And uh, less revolutions, and days would be too long, and nights would... Uh, would be too long and we'd burn up during the daytime and freeze at night So we need all of those revolutions to survive God created perfection We're tilted at 23 degrees on our axis and that gives us seasons which makes makes life possible as well Enables plants to grow at a sustainable level for to sustain all of life uh, Atmospheric gases on our planet are just right for life. 79% oxygen, 20% nitrogen, I'm sorry, 79% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, 1% lots of other various gases. If the nitrogen is too high, we all burn up. If it's flammable and concentrated, just ask the Hindenburg blimp. Next, if oceans were um, half of what they are now, we would get a quarter of the rainfall life wouldn't be able to be sustained. If they're an eighth inch, if they're one eighth bigger, we'd all be underwater. If the land wasn't mountainous and valley, full valleys like it is, we'd all also be underwater. So, and, and atheists say this all happened by chance. Good enough. All right, verse 20, and God said that the water Team with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So, this is something I wanted to mention this again 
because I went through a whole list of things, the sudden appearance of new life forms in the fossil record, you know, the origin of photosynthesis, the Avalon explosion, the Cambrian explosion, which is the origin of all animals, and then I listed off about 15 others, all right? And that all came from the research from a guy named Dr. Paleoentomologist, Dr. Gunter Beckley. And you can check out some of his findings at the Discovery in Institute. You can look him up, check out some of his books. Mm. Discovery Institute. Getting ahead of myself a little bit, but it's a huge resource for all this stuff. Dr. Gunter, Gunter Beckley. Um, verse 26 is God said, Let us make mankind in our image and our likeness, that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So I, I skipped this verse, but it re emphasizes, which is important in Scripture, every time something is repeated, that men, mankind, humankind, is built to rule. All right, in every other origin, ancient account, uh, in every other culture, the gods built earth for themselves to play in and humans to build things for them. But the God of the Bible created the earth for humans. God himself is self-sufficient. He doesn't need us. We're here to rule this place. That's a huge point. It's a huge difference. Some more conclusions. Um, from this, and theological conclusions. We got into a bunch on Sunday. I direct you back to the message from Sunday to get some of the main theological conclusions. But here's a few more that I think are really important. What is only true because of our Creator God. Number one, human beings are not self-existent autonomous. We owe our existence to God. Number two, all life is good when it's right, really, re, rightly related to God. Number three, all life can be meaningful and purposeful in God. That's huge. That's important. Okay? Number four, God is sovereign over all of his creation. He can do what he wants. He can uncreate it if he wants to. And our planet specifically is going to get uncreated at some point. And there's going to be a new earth. Next, God's world declares the glory of God. David said that many times in the Psalms. Paul said it multiple times. Job says it. Moses said it. The author of Hebrews says it. But just walk outside and it's obvious. God's world declares the glory of God. So, don't get any, any information on the Bible or Christianity from the History Channel or Wikipedia. Those are cesspools of lies and agenda. If you have unanswered questions, I can tell you every good source that there is out there. You know, we're talking about Bible dictionaries like the Baker Illustrated Bible Dictionary, written by Christians. Good source. Bible background commentaries. Those are two volumes. Cover the entire Bible. It goes through a lot of background information. Just interesting tidbits. Study Bible, my favorite is the Fire Bible. So those are all good resources. And don't trust every commentary. There's a very specific list of commentaries that I have that I, I own in my office. And it's I don't own huge sets. I own just specific commentaries from specific authors because I've read their biography, biography first and I know they're Christians. I know they're Christians. That means that you know you can trust their commentary. Otherwise, do not buy, do not read. It's just a mess. It's a cesspool. I can get you that list if you want it uh, of commentaries by Christians if you want to dive deeper into commentaries. Resources and then we'll be done. So, and then and then we'll talk well, we'll talk about old earth creation versus young earth creation too. Discovery Institute, mentioned them earlier. Discovery Science is the name of their YouTube channel. Lots of great videos there. Discovery Institute, hundreds, thousands probably of articles there um, that are researched. These are all scientists, all PhDs, microbiologists, paleoentomologists, okay, PhDs in mathematics. They have those that are trying to calculate probabilities and all these kinds of stuff. So. And, and the main guys there, Douglas Axe, he is a microbiologist who basically discovered, 
and figured out kind of the probability. He did this. They did the research on DNA and the probability of getting a helpful mutation. Douglas Axe, huge groundbreaking studies. Stephen Meyer also wrote wrote all these books that basically 100% disprove <laughs> evolution as a possible, uh, even as a possibility. Michael Behe, and then Gunter Beckley, and then there's a bunch of others. These guys are are typically all old Earth creationists. Now, um, some of some of you who have been to the Ark Museum or Ark Encounter or the Creation Museum, you might be like, "Oh, old Earth creationists!" But look, um, there is not a theological problem with either of those positions, old Earth creation or young Earth creation. I, I'm not a big fan of of theological or a theistic evolution, you know, granted there might be some Christians who, who, who think that way, it's, um, but when you're talking about theistic evolution, it has to be that God directed every bit of it, because otherwise it doesn't line up with Genesis 1 and 2, That's then it makes it a non-Christian belief. If it's a watchmaker theory, God set it all in motion and then left it, definitely not a Christian belief. does not line up with Genesis 1 and 2. Um, but, Old Earth creationists, a lot of them are full-in, committed believers. Many of them are, okay? And so, uh, this is the intelligent design community. And their curriculum should be and could be taught in public schools, because it's at the same level of all evolutionary theory in terms of how it's thought and how it's got to, and the scientific research that's involved in it. And uh, most of the scientific items I actually included in my message and in this are from Discovery Institute and Discovery Science. Um, if you were to pin me down and say, you have to decide, um, I would probably be able to articulate old earth creationism better than young earth creationism. That said, I love young earth, earth creationism. God created everything as it is. If you don't have a God who's big enough to create everything as we see it, then your God's too small. And it's not the God of the Bible. Okay? So, I love that theory. I, I love going through it with uh, Ark Encounter Creation Museum. We've been there three times with my entire family, okay, uh, for multiple days at a time and and have many resources from them too. And I use some of them in my research. And in fact, the pattern of our series is after their seven C's. It's similar to their seven C's. Not exactly the same, but it's similar to their seven C's where they're going from creation all the way to what they say consummation. We're calling it completion. All right, so Answers in Genesis is their organization that has Ark Encounter and Creation Museum. Um, that's done by Ken Ham, and they are young earth creationists. They believe that the earth is 6,000 years old. They don't believe in, in gaps in the genealogies. They don't believe in, <clears throat> you know, the, the day-age theory, uh, you know, that the days in Genesis 1 uh, could be eras or ages. Um, and so that would be young earth creationists. And that's the difference. Why does it matter? It doesn't matter for salvation. What it does matter for is that you can articulate that your faith is reasonable to others. And for me, I articulate that best with old earth creationism viewpoint. But gosh, young earth creationism is easy too. <laughs> it's really easy too. So I love you guys. Hope you enjoyed this. There's always room for dessert. I got a little more dessert to finish. God bless you.